Hey guys, today's episode might get a little bit technical as so I'm going to discuss just what the hell I'm doing here with all these cells and what is my aim and what is the plan. So, if you saw last week's episode, you've noticed that uh, I was explaining how I plan to check the capacity of every single one of these cells because I feel that it's necessary to do so. So, why is it that I need to check every one of these cells? Well, uh, the aim here is really not to prove that these cells can be used, drive an electric car. Uh, you know, Elon Musk has done that and is doing that every day, every single Model S that he's selling, you know. Uh, that point has already been proven. You know, these cells are good and they actually are making right now the best electric car on the market. So my aim is to prove that an average Joe, a regular person like me with no special skills, just an average guy working out in his garage could take these batteries, you know, basically batteries that are pretty much considered trash by most everyone. They're really on their way to being recycled. If we can somehow devise practical ways to take them and harvest them and use them, package them and use them in a car to be able to drive um, at a fraction of the cost. Um, so that's the intention here, right? So why do I have to test every cell? Well, the reason is because they are uh, proving to come in all different states. So there are cells that are practically new that they give 2,500 milliamps, 25, you know, almost 2,600, which is what they're rated at. Uh, but then again, there are cells that are rated at 1,500 milliamps. And there's a lot of cells that are rated, you know, or that come out uh, only be, uh, giving you like 300 milliamps. So they're all over the place. And there's really no easy way to be able to quickly tell what the health of the cell is. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you can kind of get an idea of so I'm getting all these cells and I used to separate them all the cells that came and they were dead and all the cells that came out of the Laptop batteries and they had charge. Um, I, I'm no longer doing that because they've been proven that there's no difference between them There's an equal amount of good and bad cells on the on the ones that came with no charge from the ones that came with the charge So now I treat them as all the same um, and what I do, the first thing I do is I put them in a charger and I'll charge them up to 4.2 volts because that's what the commercially available 18650 chargers charge to. So after they're charged, I get 150 of them put in a box and I let it, let it sit for two weeks. At which point, after the two weeks, I take them out and then what I do, I used to test them. Um, Test, test the voltage and if they had drifted or if they had if they had lost a considerable amount of voltage then a large percentage of those turn out to be bad cells or they they, they yielded very low capacity all the ones usually that stay and they don't drift and they don't lose self discharge a lot they stay somewhere around above 4.1 and a half volts you know on uh, 4.15 for example um, they are turn out to be somewhat healthy batteries they tend to yield better somewhere around the 2000 milliamps and above but not always um, it's not a foolproof test because sometimes a battery would lose and would be down to 4 volts for example and then once I checked it on the charger for capacity it would yield 2,000 milliamps, 2,100 milliamps, you know? So it's not as easy to say, I'm just discarding all the batteries that uh, lost some voltage and the two weeks that they sat there. So obviously there's another, there should, needs to be another test. And, and, and the reason is that uh, we need to find another way is because checking capacity using a charger like this, cell pro power power lab six it just takes a long time you want to you want to check capacity uh you know to simulate more or less what your car is going to be um, drawing off these batteries in my case it's going to be around one c um 
so uh, that's what I set my charger to uh, at a load of 2.25 amps um, I'm discharging them and if the battery is bad well it's only going to be there for 10 minutes and then after that it's going to click and the voltage is you know it's going to give me the under voltage alarm but if the battery is good or if the cell is good uh, then it's going to be there for an hour better part of an hour an hour and 20 minutes before it runs through the whole discharge cycle so that's all fine and dandy except that i have about 4600 batteries to check so uh, that's going to take a long time that's why i was thinking of buying more chargers so that i could do more cells at a time so um after last week's episode uh I was discussing what my plans are to check the batteries uh i got some emails from people there's a there's a gentleman up in canada that offer to send me his equipment equipment that he has developed to be able to check several uh or multiple cells at a, at a time and um i haven't had a chance to call you but if you're watching this um i did get your email and uh, i will call you next week to be able to arrange uh, at the very least have a conversation with you because i'm very interesting to to find out just what kind of equipment that you have devised to check multiple uh, cells at the same time um so there was also uh jack had a uh, uh a suggestion of a way i could do it he said to charge the batteries like I'm doing, you know, all the way to 4.2 volts. Uh, and then um, basically stress them, uh, put a, a uh, put a, a large draw on them. Uh, he, he suggested about 10 amps, which turns out that once I'm doing my test here, these cells will not give you 10 amps, they will give you eight amps. Right? So you do that for just a short amount of time, just for like 10 seconds, he said. And after that, at the exactly at the 10 second mark what you do is you um you mark exactly where the voltage had sagged to and so batteries that don't sag as much that stay you know almost close to four volts uh, will turn out to be pretty good cells so very healthy cells with a lot of capacity in them cells that you know drop down to like three volts then they usually tend to are there's going to be a problem if one cell loses too much sags too much too quickly then that's going to be a problem um i have an experiment i've been experimenting with that this week and when you know it actually works um sort of uh it's not a perfect test obviously because what i'm finding out here here's a, a sheet with all the results that i've been doing and what I found out is that, for example, I did a whole batch of, of, of these cells and I took all the, for example, all the ones that uh, sag down to 3.69 volts, for example, right? So there seemed to be a large um, group of these batteries that were sagging to the exact same level. Out of those, then I actually did the actual capacity test using the charger. and they're kind of all over the place too um so you know the first one for example here at a two amp uh discharge cycle or 1c gave me you know 2100 20 almost 2150 um milliamps right that was one uh the second one it was the same thing at two amps it was about 2130 amp uh, milliamps um but then there's one other one that was below 2000 amps, you know, which is, uh, you know, 150 milliamps less. And then this one was only discharged at one amp. So it should have actually gave me more. Uh, here's another one that gave me 2300 milliamps. Um, there was another one that gave me 2000, another one 2000, um, another one 2000 here and so on and so forth. So they kind of go all over the place also so this method it's really helpful to quickly be able to establish really good cells right like the top really 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 healthy cells you can quickly tell like which ones they are and you can quickly tell also which ones are really bad so the cells that you should absolutely not use and get away but there's this big gray area in the middle there that you still don't know if you could use it because 
if you have set your threshold to um, uh, in my case I set it to 2000 milliamps or better well you really don't know how many cells are in that middle area that are gonna yield 2000 milliamps because um, they're all over the place you know cells that that measure uh, I've gotten 2000 milliamps off of cells that go all the way to like um, 3. You know, 3.65, 3.62 right here is like 1964. 3.65, 21.09. See, so, but then again, cells in that same voltage area, they they're like at 1800, 1600 milliamps. So, I still think there should be another way to very to more accurately test the cells so that you don't get modules that are way off from each other you know you, you want to be that's that is one of the advantages of actually making your own modules um, something that you don't have when you buy prismatics for example if you buy a hundred 100 amp uh, cal batteries for example um, some of them will come at a hundred you know amps some of them will come at 130 who knows you might even get one or two that are 150 but all those extra amp hours in those cells are very much uh, wasted because you're only as good as your weakest cell in a in a series when you connect them in a series system you know so if you have a weak cell that it's 90 amp hours then your pack is gonna be 90 amp hours because you're not gonna keep going past that point uh, and hurt your your weak cell um, so the advantages of you building your own modules like this is that you can actually balance them you can actually add another cell if let's say that you you know you got let's say that you got 30 modules all with 300 amp hours and then you get the last one you know that has you know 298 well, you throw an extra cell in there and then there you go you get your 300 amp hours and therefore your whole battery pack will be exactly 300 amp hours um, so that's why I am kind of spending so much time trying to figure out how to uh, more accurately check every cell um, so next week hopefully I'll have uh, um, some more new answers and maybe new ways. Uh, hopefully I'll have an interview uh, and I am, hopefully I'll have some more equipment here um, to be able to show you guys what, uh, uh, what's an easier way to test all these cells. All right, so until next week, um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, bye. All right, so we're here, and this is uh, this is what we were most interested in coming down here because we're yeah. like we said, big BW now. So save the best for last. Yeah, right? save the best yeah. for last. This is gonna be your electric sixty-five yep. double cab, yeah, this right? This is our shop truck. This is gonna be your shop truck because you got rid of your old one, so this we, is yeah. We had a upgraded. customer that uh, wanted a Ranger, so we sold them our shop truck, and uh, you know it's a fun build, and you, you always are sad to see them go, and then you start getting excited for the next project. So you decided to upgrade from a Ranger. Not everyone would call it an upgrade, but uh, to us, it's an immense upgrade. Yeah, yeah, it's an upgrade. It's a, it's a 65 double cab. They're actually really rare. And it happens to be like the week of the, the, the Dokas, right? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. you know, everybody's doing, <laughs> but we all know that uh, the splitty Dokas the splitty, the are the best, dokas. right? Especially on Molested, on Restore. <laughs> Uh, you know, with dings and dents yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I That's look at it like artwork. Everybody has. It's their, history. Yeah, you know, it's it's. Um, it's history. You know, these cars have a lot of history, and you could see it on their skin. You can see it. You know, this got that dent right there. It's got a story. Right. This thing right here is, you know, when you went to right. some state over there and stuff. So, 
And, you know, we could just be at uh, the midlife crisis for this thing, right? You know, it's 50 plus years old, throw a new electric drivetrain in it, maybe get another 50. I mean, can you imagine 50 years from now driving a 100 year old split Doka? Oh yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. And so we put them next to this one because this is the, the uh, 65 double cab that we drove here from LA yeah. down here. And it's like, they're like twins. Uh, yeah. In fact, they're the same year they're probably very close in uh, bin numbers. We're gonna check them out and see. Uh... Yeah, I'd imagine the, the Germans were kind of, you know, putting their hands and their, their love into these, hand building them. And... Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So, so they're, they're gonna be, see a little bit different life, you know. This one's obviously had a little rough life. Uh, <laughs> you know, this one is, it was, I, I think it was pampered in some uh, little. Uh... Yeah, you can tell that this rust was much more pampered. <laughs> Yes. Rust on this car, which is uh, more of a Santa Ana, California yeah. coast salty yeah, rust. Yeah, that's what it was. This, this is one... more of a well fine aged patina. This is the much sought after rust. Well, this was a farmer. And this was a uh, this is a surfer. Yeah, this is a hippie. Yeah. yeah, it's a hippie. So you know, a lot more drugs on this guy. <laughs> and this is all organic foods. Yeah. Tomatoes and stuff. <laughs> this guy was smoking a little bit more, you know, and having a little more fun. I, I but he was smoking a lot more. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some uh, sticker removal to do. <laughs> but definitely, this will see uh, a different life now because you're gonna convert into electric, so it's gonna be yeah, fun. And it's gonna be our daily, you know, just like our Ranger. We we drove it every day, um, drove it home at night, and, and used it to run errands for the shop. And this will be the same thing. And you know, the problem with the Ranger was it only sat to adults. And a lot of times we'd like to take, you know, hey, let's go for a drive. So with this, we'll at least be able to take five adults out yeah. for a drive. And at the same time, you know, fill the bed full of parts and bring it back to the shop. Yeah. So we're definitely rooting for you on, on this project. And we hope to see it at the, uh, at the W shows too, yeah. because yeah. Um, we need some more yeah. out there, especially electric. Yeah. Um, if you guys know, I have my, my Samba, my electric Samba. So it needs some company out in yeah. some of these shows, you know, right. it's like, I'm the only guy over there, you know. <laughs> Safety in numbers, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So definitely very, very cool projects. We're glad to be down here and kind of show you guys what these guys are working on. Uh, you guys are doing some really, really uh, good oh, yeah, and uh, exciting projects. And we're kind of, you know, excited for you guys that... Uh, spreading the good word the good yeah, ev well, word uh, yeah so thank you for having us over oh man we kind of yeah we know we kind of we know we kind of ruined your day by not being able to do any other work than uh, when we're here I but mean, really um, you kind of made our day right <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for That's having us definitely like and uh thank you for sponsoring the electric sound bus projects yeah. and all our projects that we're doing and stuff we definitely see ourselves being in this you know, trying to do more, some more of these fun stuff with cars and stuff, whether it be electric or performance yeah. cars and stuff. And lost our wheel right here folks if you enjoy my videos don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment uh, if you don't then also leave me a comment so i can make these videos better thank you